The curse is broken because Jesus hung on the tree for us. Proverbs says a curse without a cause cannot alight like a sparrow that flits in the wind. You know, sparrows, you don't see them landing. They just fly around doing their thing. And a curse without a cause cannot alight. It cannot stay on you. And there is no cause for a curse to be upon us. The curse of the law is sin, sickness, death, poverty, lack. And it's all broken in the name of Jesus. He broke the power of the curse. He broke the curse over us. All we have to do is just believe. Just take hold of the promise of God and believe. Believe God for what he said. He's broken the curse. Jesus paid for it with his blood. So if he thinks it's worthy enough to pay for it, we should step up and just believe. Don't you think? We should just believe. He paid for it. We should believe it. We're going to take communion this morning. Stewards, if you could serve it, that would be wonderful. And uh, we're going to partake of this of, of what Jesus did for us on the cross by faith. All we do is we take a little cup, which speaks of the blood of Jesus, and a little biscuit, which speaks of the body of Jesus. But he paid for us with his blood, and he broke the curse on the cross. He broke the power of it. He broke the sting of it. Our response is to believe. The Old Testament, you had to behave. In the New Testament, you have to believe. It's not about behavior. It's about believing in your heart. You know, sometimes we still try and earn stuff from God. But it doesn't work that way. We cannot earn these things. Jesus paid for it. You know, if I cook somebody out to dinner and I said, it's my shout. I did that once in South Africa. They had no clue what I was talking about. Because it's a, you know, I said, it's all right. It's my shout. I'll shout you. They said, what do you mean here, shouting? <laughs> And, I, and they didn't understand the language. I realized it was an Australian colloquialism where we'll pay for you. Well, Jesus shouted us. He paid for us. He paid the price so we don't have to. It's the biggest shout in heaven. <laughs> it's the biggest shout in history. It's the biggest shout on earth. He shouted us. He paid the price. Paid for it with the highest thing that he could give. He paid with his blood and with his life. And he rose again from the dead. It's so grateful we've got a living God. That he's not still on the cross. That he's paid for it on the cross. But he's not there any longer. He's not there. He broke the curse. Paid for it. And this is what we're partaking of by faith. As we take of the blood, we take of the, the, the biscuit, which speaks of his body. By faith we're partaking of him. And the curse is broken because he's paid for it. And in doing this we say, I accept your shout. I accept it. And I thank God that's where the, the analogy ends because the next round would be on us. And we can't do that. <laughs> that's where it finishes. He's paid for it. There's no more to pay. No more that needs to be done. He's broken it. So we choose to believe and accept. We choose to, to thank God for it. That's one of the reasons I'm so grateful. And when by faith you partake of this, and the experience of it comes to you, not just the theology, not just the mindset, but the experience of it comes into your world and begins to break over you where you receive your healing to your bodies, where you receive provision for your finances, where you see just these things broken off you, the curse of poverty, the curse of lack, the curse of, of all those aspects of sin, of shame, and of guilt, and, and condemnation. When those, the experience of that comes to you, then we're free. For whom the sun sets free is free indeed. We want to enter into that encounter with God and not just have a theology about it, a mindset. It's experience, the living God coming to us, which we're just so grateful and we thank Him for. Father, we thank You that You loved us so much You sent Your Son to pay the price, to break the curse, to bring us into that wholeness. We honour You and magnify You in Jesus' name. Let's eat and drink. Thank you, thank you, thank you, oh God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's why I've got joy in my heart because of Jesus. <laughs> I'm so grateful that he didn't leave me to my own devices. 
And that doesn't mean that he just left me to my own phone. It means he left me to my own stuff. <laughs> God is so good. I'm so very grateful to him, you know. So very grateful for the times when he's come and I haven't expected it. And he's come just so powerfully and met with us and blessed us so wonderfully. Who's grateful? Who's grateful to God this morning? You're grateful with me? Just grateful. We honour you and love you. It's great to see Neil and Nance. They're looking so good. You're looking so good, Nance. You too, Nance. <laughs> I'll add you in there. <laughs> so grateful to have you in the house today. I tell you what, there is just there's there's quite a few changes happening in the wind, and uh, I'm very excited for what's coming up in the near future and where we're where we're headed into. God is doing a good thing. He's doing a very good thing amongst us, and so I'm very very pleased about that. More to, more to tell you about in the future. We do have some things coming up. Next week, of course, we've got some cards for sale. And they'll be going, see that look of Merry Christmas. Anybody send Christmas cards anymore? Yeah, yeah. Make sure you get them here next week. Okay? Because that is also a, a missions um, offering. And uh, so make sure you get that next week. I'll tell you what, one thing else we're going to be doing next week. We're going to take up a missions offering for Bojidar in a uh, Bulgarian pastor who goes in and out of Ukraine. And I was speaking to him this week and he was just telling me some of the stories and I mentioned it last week. We're going to take up an offering for him, so come prepared next week. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to take an offering for him as he goes in and out of the Ukraine and uh, there are some changes that are, that are happening there, but there's still people in desperate need. Apparently, you know, they're having real power problems and uh, they're heading into a winter with no power and no supply. Uh, so it's, there's a challenge for our brothers and sisters over there, and I think it's a, just a, a great opportunity for us to give. And here's the thing, every single cent of that goes to those people in need. None of it goes on administration, I can guarantee that. And uh, so it's a very, very great thing for us to sow into and give into as a church. So we're going to be doing that next week, okay? Just so you know. And uh, for those of the people that aren't here next week, you're most welcome to uh, give it to us online, let us know, or get a message to us. We'll make sure that money goes to where we want it to go. But we want to be people who walk with our brothers and sisters wherever they are. On the other side of the world, where they're here, we're going to be uh, sowing into that. Okay. Um, I believe, Meg, where'd you go? You got a testimony for us? Come and tell us what God's doing in your journey. I heard a couple of testimonies this morning of what God's touching people. Oh, he is, yes. God is good all the time. I have um, quite an amazing story to share. Margot knows about this. How many of you use your phones just as a telephone? A few. Most of us use our phones for as a computer in our handbag or our pocket or whatever. And it's a treasured thing because it's your means of contact. And yesterday morning I was going to a very special event and I knew that I was going to be taking photographs. So I'm on my way, plenty of time to get there, and I go, where's my phone? And I'm routing around and I'm like, where are you? Sheep as I didn't put it in. Darn, have I got time? Have I got time? Yeah, I've got time to go back, turn around, go back home. I'm halfway to my destination. I get back home and I think, where did I put it? And I go, oh, no. I put it on the car. I put it on the bonnet of the car because I was outside doing some stuff and I thought if I hear the phone, it's there. I never thought about it to put it in the bag. So I come back home, where on earth will it have fallen? It must have just slipped off in my driveway. No, nowhere. My neighbour phoned it, nothing. I thought, okay, Lord, I don't know where this phone is. It's got everything, it's got my diary, it's got my everything in it. And I'm just going to go to this event, and I'm not even going to think about it because I leave it with you, Lord. It's in your hands. It's nothing I can do. I trust you. So I went to this beautiful event, had a lovely time. I came home. I went to Margot, my neighbour, and I said, Margot, I need your help. Can you please come outside with me and dial my phone? And she did. And the voice answered and said, I've just picked this phone up on the side of the road in Ballinger Road. It was about, oh, five minutes from my home, not even that. But the weird thing is this. I had driven down the hill, around the hill, down to Mountain Creek, realised I didn't have my phone, do a U-turn and come back. 
up the hill, and it's on that side of the road. Now I ask you, is God good? Woo! <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, Meg. Thanks, thanks, thanks. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I want to ask you to take me for a ride anywhere. I might get dropped somewhere strange. But who knows? God is good. That's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, Bernie, you've got a testimony. Come and tell us what God's been doing with you, man. I really appreciate Bernie. You just jumped up and helping us. It's just such a... I, I just want to say that you are an answer to prayer, and I appreciate you. <laughs> so, for two years I've been suffering from the digestive enzyme deficiency, and then I can't have milk, I can't have uh, grain, I can't have rice, everything sort of thing, and then and then, and then I was working very hard, and then I, I was carrying that pain, that heartburn, that st stomach discomfort, like vomiting, everything else. And then, and then I believed that God will heal me. I was just praying and believed. And then it was very hard to go through that situation for me because I'm a relation of my family. And then in 2019, I lost my mom. And then I had to take a big responsibility for my life. I had to take care of my four siblings, their education, their everything. And then I've been working like three or two jobs, sometimes three jobs, sometimes two jobs. And then I was doing my uh, study and then I, I was literally stressed, stressed about my future, stressed about my, you know, uh, if I can't help my family, if I can't, you know, I, I feel really, really stressed, embraced, and then, but in the midst of that, I was believing that God, you will heal me, you will deli deliver me from everything because I believe in you. Because, and then and I was praying and then going, like coming to church, and then, like, uh, uh, as I was bearing that all the pain, and then every, every time when I eat, you know the cheese or milk, and then I instantly bond. And then I carry that pain for so long time, for three years. And then now God healed me. And then <clears throat> a week before, I had the pizza, and then I had their oats, everything sort of thing. I had the coffee. And I don't feel anything. Wow, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I praise God for everything. <laughs> Bernal, we're just going to agree with you. Bernal's believing for his wife to come out from Nepal to get a visa. I would wonder if we as a church could just add it to our prayer list. Just pray for this young man who's a man of God. You hear his stories and testimony of, you know, just supporting his church back in Nepal, but also he's serving us now. So, Father, we just agree with Bernal for his family, for, the, for their visas, for the supply, for the provision, that you would make way for them, for him to be restored to his wife and, and reunited, that you'd be able to get over here. Father, we thank you your grace and your provision over his life in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, bless you, man. Bless you. Uh, Perna is a great man. He's a chef. If you ever go to Rice Boy, you know, you, you might get some of his food there. I went there once and I tell you that stuff's hotter than a brown dog in Burke. I tell you, it's just too much for me. <laughs> but good food. But great, good man, good man, good man. We're going to take our tithes and offerings and honour God with our finances. And love on him. You know, God is a supplier. He's broken the curse of lack. He's a God who supplies. The next verse in that uh, Galatians 3.13 says, So that the blessing of Abraham can come upon us. And Abraham was blessed to be a blessing. And it's one thing to, to have a blessing, but it's another thing to be a blessing. So we want to allow that blessing to flow. We honour you. We thank you for your provision, Lord. We bless you for it. We bring our offering to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, stewards. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There is, a, I've, I've just been getting downloads from God about some aspects of the kingdom that I'm going to be bringing in the next season. I'm so excited about and uh, just believing God for us to step into all that he's got for us. In this next little season, we've got some few changes happening. As I've mentioned, we're going to be handing back the hub. And uh, so I did want to be able to have that through January, um, but that 
may not be happening now. So I'll keep you informed of, of where we're going to be meeting and all that sort of stuff. Um, but on the 1st of December, which is you know three, three weeks away, something or other, we're going to be having our breakup meal for uh, Coffee Connections at Brightwater Hotel. So that's on Thursday the 1st. And uh, we do need to, to um, advise of numbers for that, for catering, for lunch. Um, so please see Gordon and Margaret if you're intending to come to that. Put my name down. That's, that'll be great. That's Gordon and Margaret there, those good-looking people. And um, uh, that will be happening on the 1st. Now, on the 11th, Sunday the 11th, we're going to have a Christmas barbecue here after church on, on Sunday the 11th. So we didn't want to make it too close to Christmas because there's all of that sort of stuff going on. But I thought it'd be great if we could just have a fellowship lunch after church. And uh, that'll be on Sunday the 11th. A couple of other things happening in December, but we'll wait till December to get to that. Okay. We're still meeting at the Hub on, on Tuesday at 10 a.m. And uh, I encourage you to come along and pray and agree with us if you can. I still believe in for a great awakening for Australia. Our nation needs it more than it ever has. We need it. We're in a fight for values, we're in a fight for the 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 we're in a fight for the heart of our nation to stand for righteousness, and uh, we're just believing for that. And you know, I've been speaking on it and talking about that and aspects of that, and we're going to believe for that. So that's very very good. We've got a whole bunch of people that have you know all gone in all sorts of different directions. Uh, if you're praying for for Jan Marshall, she's you know uh, had some issues going on. She's broken a foot. Uh, but she's out with her daughter out of black butt at the moment. I would encourage you, if you're aware of needs with one another, please pray. Like we're praying for Perno. I'm going to hold you in my, in my prayer time and believe God for you, man. And, uh, but we want to be able to stand and walk with one another. While we're believing for our nation, we also need to be praying for one another. Amen? Is that true? Amen, amen. It is my great privilege and honour to welcome a great man of God to come and minister the word of God to us. But I would like to say that it has been a great privilege to walk with Neil now for, I don't know, 40 odd years, a long time. The first time I met Neil, I was just green as grass and didn't know anything, had nothing between my ears. And I don't know if a lot's changed, but uh, certainly God has been done a, a great work in my life. And Neil has been a significant part of that. And I'm grateful to you, Neil, for coming, bringing the word of God to us, the man of God. Come and bless us. Deja vu. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nancy, why don't you come up and say a quick hello? I've got a microphone still. I'm a bit noisy here. Where's the mic for Nancy? Here we go. There you go. What's new? <laughs> What's new, Pussy Cat? Hello, everybody. It's so lovely to be here with you today. To Worship the Lord, and it's so great to be back here. Really, really lovely. We're here for a special wedding this afternoon that we're performing with a, somebody that's like family to us. Um, we've known for many, many years, been in ministry together, and marrying their eldest daughter. So um, that's the other event we're here for, the secondary one. <laughs> but we're sure glad to see all of you and to um, be able to love on each one of you today. So bless you all. Okay. Amen. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you. Is this, uh, does that sound okay or, or I'm a bit loud? A little bit loud, just a little bit louder now, a little bit lower now. <laughs> well, I want to tell you, I am so excited to be here today. I am very, very happy to be here. Tom, you've almost stolen my thunder already. Uh, we're on the same page still, Amen. And uh, it's exciting what God is doing. How many people believe that there is going to be a move of the Spirit of God across Australia? And, and you know, we're part of it. We're, we are part of it. But how many people also realize that we've had a major attack on the church lately? It's trying to rob, steal, and kill. The vision, the purpose, the plan, everything that we stand for. And a lot of people have grown cold. A lot of people have lost a vision. A lot of people have lost a dream. A lot of people now, it's online Christianity. And, uh, you know, you can go online and watch whatever you want to watch and whatever tickles your fancy. But how many people know we need to hear the Word of God? 
We, we want the anointing. How many people want the anointing? Come on, give us a put up your hand if you really want the anointing. Father, we, we're here today because we want to be anointed by the Holy Ghost. We want to hear the anointed voice of God. And Lord, we ask you today that you'd speak to each one of us as individuals. You take this message today and break it up and divide it and feed people whatever it is that they need today that we might break the strongholds of the enemy, that we might break through into that which you have for us. It's like breaking the sound barrier, that we'll go into a different dimension. We'll go into a different phase of our, of our life. And, and my God, I pray that the wind of the Spirit would spur us again, cause us to rise up, cause us to be the people that you want us to be, and for that, we'll give you all the praise, we'll give you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You know, the Word of God says, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Or the truth will set you free. You know, the word that I want to, I guess, focus on a little bit this morning is know. That you might know the truth. See, a lot of people know the truth. But not too many people know the truth. You know what I mean? A lot of people can recite the word of God. We can, we can quote the scriptures. We can speak things. But do you really, really know what God is trying to say to us? Do we really, really know the power that God has invested in this word? Do you really believe that this word is the truth? you believe it's the truth? It's the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Amen. And this word is so valuable, it's so powerful, it's so, it's so, it, and it wants to manifest itself in and through our lives. You see, when you know the truth, something changes around about our lives. When you know, if you, if you don't know, if you don't know a certain thing, if you don't know the speed limit, if you don't know what's ahead of you, if you don't know where you're heading, where we sort of wander aimlessly, or there's doubt, or there's, there's concern, or there's fear, or there's that, that uncertainty that gets around our lives. And I feel that the church has sort of gone into a place of uncertainty. There's so many doctrines, so many philosophies, so many different things that are going on at the moment. So many different voices. But I want to tell you, there's one voice that we need to hear, that's the voice of the Holy Ghost. We need to hear what God is saying. There are things that God has given us through the redemptive work of the cross of Calvary and the resurrection of our Christ that will transform your life. There are things that God has freely given to us that many times we don't know. We don't know what it really means. We, we have a, a, a sort of a knowledge of it. But to really know what God is saying, to really know what God has invested in our lives will change us. That that knowledge will transform us. It, it, will, it, it will cause you to think differently. It's not, I don't know or I'm not sure, but somehow or other inside, I know because I know because I know. I know my Redeemer lives. I know that there's going to be a move of the Spirit of God. Hell will have to freeze over before that will not happen. I know that God is moving by His Spirit. I know that God is going to use you, this church. How do I know? Because God has spoken it. And if we, and if we, he just, the words that God has spoken over this church, if we just let them like flutter around and they're just up there and we can say, oh yes, and this and that, but when you grab hold of it, when you grab hold of it, it's like healing, when you grab hold of it, when you grab hold of it, you see, talk to the young man, he's three years suffering. When did Jesus heal him? Just on that day? No, he healed him 2,000 years ago. But all of a sudden, our Noah begins to know. And something inside you rises up and you grab hold of that which is truth and you bring it into yourself and you apply it to yourself and you get healed. Amen. It's there right now. It's, it's for every one of us. Margot, it's already there for your healing. 
It's, all, it's already done, amen. It's, the, it's already finished. All you've got to do is grab hold of it. And all we've got to do is say, Margo, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Be loosed of that infirmity. And, and, and understand that it's already done. You see, we'll, we'll think differently, but one of the great things I believe in the church is that we need to act differently. We need to walk through the storms of life with a different attitude. There's an enemy out there. He will do whatever he can. He comes to rob, to kill, and destroy. He'll do whatever he can to discourage you, to, to, to bring you down. And You know, 12 months ago with Nancy, with the sickness and, that, and the, the uncertainty and, and the, just looking and, and with your natural eyes, you, just, you feel like, what's, what's going to happen? But somehow or other, you've just got to walk through it. You've got to push through it. You've got to do everything you can and break the stronghold of the enemy and see the victory in Jesus' name. Amen? Man, I miss Millie. She'd be shouting by now. <laughs> you see, it starts to act differently. When we realize that we're in Christ and we, we have the ability to be everything that God says we are and we can do everything that God says we can do. Amen? See, this book wasn't just written because God had nothing else to do. It's a, it's a book of instructions to us. And when we get hold of it and we eat it and when it, when it becomes ours and we start to quote the Word of God and we start to believe the Word of God and we start to act on the Word of God, your whole life will change. The atmosphere around your life will change. The enemy will not be able to penetrate because something inside you, he knows that when he comes, that you're going to rise up against him. When he comes, you're not going to accept his lies. Satan is the accuser. Satan is a liar. Amen. A lot of people don't even believe that he exists, but he does. See, spiritual things have got to be spiritually understood. It's not a theory. Christianity is not a theory. It's, it's not a, just waiting around for the rapture. It's not just waiting around uh, to, to, to go to heaven. Praise God, they're benefits. They're benefits. That's where we're heading. But, but in the meantime, right now, God is wanting to raise up an army. He's wanting to build up people of power. He's wanting to build up a people of, you know, man, how many people have heard the naysayers around the place and, and they walk up to you and they say, oh, you know, this is bad. And somebody's got to stand up and say, what a lot of garbage. <laughs> My Lord lives, amen. And, and, and it's no good, you know, if, if you're not living it, but somewhere or other inside you, there's something in you grit your teeth. Tom was jumping around here like a two-year-old this morning. And, and, and you know, you could see that he was happy. <laughs> Can you understand what I'm saying? You could see that he was happy. Why? Because he was acting like he was happy. And if you're powerful, you've got to act like you're powerful. If you act in the victory, you've got to live like you're in the victory. Go down the gurgler with everything else and that the enemy wants. You know, this COVID and goodness knows what else. And now there's another stream coming. Well, glory to God. Amen. <laughs> can't let that defeat us. We can't let that stop us. We can't, we can't allow it to do that. Spiritual things must be spiritually understood. If God be for you, who can be against you? Who can be against you, friend? Nobody can be against you because you're more than a conqueror. That's what God says about you. Sense knowledge tries to interpret the Word of God. Sense knowledge has always got an answer. I went to a, my, a neighbor, a couple down, I had this big bunch of bananas, so I thought I'd take them down some bananas, and I took him down some bananas. That, I, I got the shock of my life when I found out that he was 10 years younger than I am. I thought he was on his last week, legs, but anyhow. I went out there and I, I gave him some bananas and, and next minute his wife come out and she's come out like this. She's got a heat pack around her neck. She's got something else on her like that. And I uh, looked at her and I said, what is going on with you, woman? She said, oh, my neck. She said, I'm in pain. This is in pain. And, and that, I've got all this stuff. And, 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 uh, and I said, oh, can I pray for you? She said, no. 
I'm a Jehovah Witness. <laughs> I'm thinking, man, man, you're not doing a very good witness. <laughs> you look more like a sickness witness. <laughs> she, she, she said, that all went out with the, with the disciples. I said, oh, did it? See, sense knowledge will try to interpret the Word of God. And they've got these funny little scriptures, and they've got these funny little things. And, 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 and her husband looked at me, and he said, he said, if I've got pain, you can pray for me. <laughs> so he wasn't a very good whatever they were, Jehovah Witness or something. <laughs> See, sense and knowledge tries to interpret the word of God. And every you listen to these people and some of them say, ah, oh, well, you know, you've got to do this. No, no, you just got to believe God. Trust and obey. For there's what? No other way to be what? Happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Trust and obey. God can look after a phone on a silly car. They're smartphones. <laughs> you know, God, is, is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too difficult for God? Can God do it or can't God do it? See, we've got to change our belief system and realize that there's a lot of sense knowledge still in us. And when we understand the Word of God, well, then it will change. Sense knowledge strips the Word of God of its power, of its authority. I want you to have a little look at with me here. I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, uh, we all know these scriptures very, very well, but Therefore, what's therefore? When you see a therefore in the Bible, you've got to see what it's there for. <laughs> therefore, if anyone is in Christ, give me a wave if you're in Christ. Come on, give me a wave if you're in Christ. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Say no more. <laughs> 5.17. See, we're a new creation. We're brand new. Something's changed. New creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. See, when, when we, if we understood really what happened when we, get, when we get born again, if the world really understood what happens when you get born again, everybody would want it. You see, people understand, the world understands the power of advertising. They'll advertise a product and everybody wants one. If we are God's advertising boards, we, we are what God, we, we're God's voice, we're God's people. And if we can change and act like God wants us to act, if we can find the victory of the cross of Calvary, if we can really find the power of the gospel, if we can find that healing anointing that God wants to pour out upon us and walk through and when the enemy, when people come up to you and they, and they, and they talk to you and they say, we're this well, we can say, I can lay hands on you. The Bible says these signs will follow them that believe in my name. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover, amen. And we'll start to see the manifestation and when people see the manifestation of who God really is, Everybody will want him. But you see, the church has got some doctrines and philosophies and traditions and things like that that are so dead. I, I don't understand walking around with a thing with smoke, blowing smoke over people. It's no good having a cross around your neck if you don't know the power of it. It's no good taking communion of a morning if you don't know what it really represents. That crap of what it represents is so powerful. It's one of the most powerful things. But sometimes we just bring it back down to the cracker. It's a bit stale this morning. I don't care whether it's stale, moldy, or whatever it is. It's got nothing to do with that. It's got everything to do with what it represents. It represents the victory, hallelujah. 
I don't know about you, but give yourself a pat on the back. You are victorious. You are ruler and reigner in Christ. Hallelujah. You are more than a conqueror. You are a champion. And it's time that we, the church, begin to act like it. Act like it and know who we are. We are now a new creation. The devil's nature has been taken out of us. I needed to be saved. Anybody else need to be saved here? I needed to be saved. I needed to be saved. I needed to become a new creature. I needed the devil's nature to be taken out of me. See, you're reconciled back to the Father. That which was lost now is brought back to the Father. The fallen nature has ceased. I don't have to put up with it. What happens, you see, is that we're, we're all can get caught up in anger and stuff can rise up, and it will rise up. But you see, what happens is when it rises up, something else has got to rise up beside us, amen. The knowledge of God, what God says, and realize that that, that, that thing has been dealt with. It's been finished, and I don't have to act like that anymore. I don't have to do that anymore. I don't have to be that anymore. I'm, I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a child of God. I, I've been changed by the glory of God. Now the knowledge, everybody say knowledge, the knowledge of what God has given me, more power, no weapon formed against me can prosper. So this thing will not prosper and I overcome it by the blood of the Lamb and I tell it to shut its mouth and I tell it to lay down because it's dead. And you walk in the victory of the cross of men. See, if you don't fight it, see, there's none of, everybody here has, has come to the person that, that, that's, you know, the devil made me do it. The poor devil. Sometimes I really feel sorry for him. The poor devil. The devil. No, it wasn't the devil that made you do it. You wanted to do it. Oh, oh. I'm speaking to myself. <laughs> but I've realized that I have to change in me. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. Everything that we were before I was saved has stopped being. That old man, that old nature. All you were in Satan stopped. Anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, etc. All things of weakness and failure are gone. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Galatians, uh, Romans 6, 6 says this, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. See, knowing. Too often we can just go through a, a, a system or goes through a, a pattern or we can do things. We can just carry on and, you know, act like this or do that. But you've got to know. I've got to know. I've got to know the power. I've got to know. I've got to know that, that my old man was crucified. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with. This is not, what I'm sharing is just not my, this is what the Word of God says. And when we start acting on this and say, listen here, you body of flesh, you're dealt with, you're crucified, you're not having a resurrection service, I'm going to put you down, I'm going to stand against you, I'm going to triumph over you. We rule and reign in Christ, Amen. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Slaves of sin. See, what Jesus has done, he set us free. Know, know that our old man was crucified. Many are slaves to the weakness of our flesh. I, I know what it was like. I, I know what, even as a new Christian, not really understanding not, not knowing what God had done for me. That anger thing inside me would rise up and I'd, I'd fume and I'd raise, I'd smash things, I'd break things, I'd, I'd kick kitchen cupboard doors off their hinges, I, I'd put my fist through walls I, I, because that was what I was like. 
That's what I said I need to be saved. But when I got born again, I didn't understand. I didn't have the teaching. I didn't have the knowledge. I didn't have. I, I was told when we have communion that I had to uh, repeat this when I first got saved. I'm, I'm nothing but a worm. And, and, and that, though that can, you know, put your old flesh down, it doesn't really do anything for you. But this worm, you see, turned into a, a caterpillar and turned into a, a chrysalis and came out a brand new person, amen. Metamorphosis, I think they call it. You've got to understand that, that we're no longer slaves. I was a slave to the weakness of the flesh. But then I started to hear things and I started to learn things and I started to, that I have to have to fight that there's an enemy for the weapons of my warfare are not carnal but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, pulling down imaginations and thoughts and everything that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. We, we've got to pull them down. It's not just a tip throw toe through the tulips with Tiny Tim. It's a war that we're in. And if you fight with Jesus, if you fight with Jesus, I want to tell you, if, not fight with him, but fight with him. You know what I mean? Don't fight him, but fight, work with him and overcome the flesh. I didn't know how I was ever going to stop swearing. I've told that many times. But, but I said, God, you've got to help me. And he helped me. Don't think I've sworn yet this morning. Still works. Still works. <laughs> But you see, the, the thing is that, that we, we, we're just not walking through life. Oh, well, praise the Lord, we go to church today. No, we, we, we are the church. We are his voice. We are his people. And God wants to do a deep work in our lives. We are no longer slaves to the weakness of the flesh. Ephesians 2 verse 1 says, And you are made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Many of us try to get rid of the old nature and, 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 and don't know that it was put away. You've got the victory. There's a guy there, uh, Shambuck. He's one of the real old, old-time old preachers. A lot of us might have heard some of his messages and that, but he was an evangelist. He was a powerful man, healing, deliverance and that. But when he was a kid, he didn't understand. He didn't know. And, and in those days, they used to carry their books, you know, half a dozen books, and they'd, they'd go to school with the books. They didn't have uh, bags or whatever it is like today. But anyhow, he said this bully used to come at him every, every day, every so time he saw him. He said he'd try to go this way. He said the bully would be there. When he saw the bully, he said the bully would push him over and knock his, all his books everywhere, and he'd be on the floor picking up the books, and the bully would be laughing at him. And, it, and this happened for a long, long time, but he said, all of a sudden, he said, I, I've had enough. And I think this is where we, the church, have got to come to, where we say, we've had enough of the devil bullying me. I've had enough of the devil's lies. I've had enough of, of, of his garbage that he pours on me. I've had enough of him. And, and this shambuck said, he saw him coming, and, and first of all, he thought, oh, 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 no, he said, it's too late. He's coming again. He said, but I've had enough. I've had enough. And as, as he walked up, he had his books in his arms, and this big bully was about to push him, and he said he had his fist back here, and he said he hit him fair on the chin. Bang! And he said he dropped him like a spud. Shambach went to his mates and said, I didn't know he had a glass jaw. Now, I'm not saying go and fight people. We try to get rid of it, but you can't. You've got to fight it. You've got to stand up with God. And, 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 and the devil's got a glass jaw because he's already been defeated. Amen. Just uh, how many people read uh, Romans chapter 12? We all know this so much. And I'm just talking about us. And, and, and here's the, the, the word of God. It's Saying, come on, I want, I want you. I want you, the people. This is, oh, Father, I thank you today. I ask you, Jesus, to help me. I feel so miserable. I'm being knocked about. And God, 
God can't really do too much there, can he? I beseech you. I'm pleading with you. Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We've got to have our minds renewed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, when we, when we begin to rise up and, and do that, I believe that God starts to act on our behalf. God starts to move. When we understand what redemption, what the new creation has made us, we can live free. Live free from the onslaught of the enemy. He's made me free. I can live free. I've got, I've got to start to, to, to quote, I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I, man, that, that, that boggles my mind. But, but when I understand it and start to believe it and start to work with that, then I understand that God has changed me. I'm not like I used to be. Amen. He's changing me from glory to glory. He's changing me. I, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm a child of God. I'm redeemed. Redemption, our Redeemer is Christ. No one can rob you of your redemption when you're born again. I'm redeemed. I'm a child of God. God, didn't, uh, God did it for me by sending His Son as a ransom, born again. Colossians 1, 13 and 14, it says, He, Jesus, has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us or transferred us into the kingdom of of the son of his love. Tom said he's going to start speaking about the kingdom. I want to tell you, that is the greatest message that you'll ever hear. We've got to understand that we do not belong to this kingdom. We belong to another kingdom. There's a kingdom where there's power, where there's authority, where there's victory, where there's overcoming, where there's, oh, glory to God, you will put all your own adjectives in there. Delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his son of love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. I'm delivered, I'm forgiven. Newsboys wrote a song, I'm forgiven. Every time I hear that song, every time I hear it played and just allow the truth that's inside it melt away. Has anybody here ever, ever in a quiet time or something like that and the devil starts to uh, bring back in your remembrance, bad things that you've done? That, that's where he comes to rob, to kill, and destroy. What, what, you've, when, when that happens, we've got we've to rise up. We've got to say, that is a lie. That, that's where I used to be, but I'm not that anymore. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, has cleansed me. I'm a new creation. You've got, you got to tell the devil who you are. Get him off your back, otherwise he keeps coming. And for year after year after year, because of my life and because of what I went through as a kid and, and some of the things that happened to me, I, I, oh, glory to God. Man, when we first got married, unsaved, Nancy and I fell in love, but man, we went from wedlock to deadlock. I drove the poor woman crazy. I did, I truly, I did. I was a mongrel. That old nature, that man, I can remember slamming my fist through the wall. <laughs> and I think of those things, time, and I, but, but when it rises up, I've got to say, no, that's not me anymore. I haven't put my fist through a wall for a couple of weeks. No. <laughs> I haven't kicked the kitchen cupboard door off for ages now. I, but I'm not saying that the devil doesn't have a go because why? He is the accuser of the brethren. 
and he tries to get you into that place where you, he squeezes the very life of God out of you. But that's the best time you can slap him up the side of the head and find out that he's got a glass jaw. Because the Bible tells, what my Bible tells me to do is draw near to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We've got to learn to resist, amen. How about we have, uh, like they had the French resistance in Germany, how about we have the, the resistance for, have an organization called, what do we call it? <laughs> Get back to your notes now. <laughs> See, the new birth changes our nature. It changes our nature. The new birth settles the problem of the sin nature. At the new birth, we receive God's nature. Isn't that good? God's nature. The fallen nature is dealt with. Dealt with. I don't have to be a slave to the old nature. When we believe this and act upon it, the truth, we will become out of bondage, out of fear, out of weakness and failure into the fullness of the new life in Christ. We're sons and daughters of the Most High God. Do you believe that today? We're heirs. We're heirs of God. We're joint heirs with Jesus. 1 Corinthians 6.20 says, For we were bought with a price. See, the minute I said that, I felt in my mind, he bought you, but you're on the bottom shelf. I might have been on the bottom shelf, you hairy-legged looking whoop whoop. <laughs> but today I'm top shelf. Every opportunity you can, even while you're preaching, you'll have a shot at you. Stupid idiot. Ephesians 3 19 it says, And know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge and understanding, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Don't think wrong about yourself. Don't, don't think wrong. Think good. Amen. Since knowledge can stop us, I'm not saying to be stupid. I'm not trying to say to be stupid. There are things there, yes, that we've got to deal with. There's things there that we might be still going through. But don't let them get a hold of you until they pull you down and strangle you. There's things there that can just get a hold of you. We've got to break through that thing. We've got to believe God. Not saying to be stupid, but just believe what God says about you, what you can have and what you can do. Satan shall not have dominion over, there, over you. Uh, John uh, 8.36 says, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you'll be free indeed. Satan's been defeated by our Savior to believe that. 2 Corinthians 5.2.15 uh, says, Having spoiled or disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Luke 10.19 says this, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. I give you the power. Satan thought he had power, but God has now given us the power. Power to rise up. Power to be the church. Power to be a voice. Power to, to just worship him and love him. and You know, if we're really, really honest with ourselves and realize that this war that we're on, some, some days we mightn't win every battle. Sometimes he gets around our lives and pulls us right down. And sometimes discouragement gets around us. But I want to tell you, when you get into the presence of God, and, and Tom and Deb, I want to say thank you for, and the congregation too, for, for the one thing that we all want more than anything else is the presence of God. Amen. Just watching Tom this morning and just, uh, yeah, just wanting the presence of God. I met a lady, or Nancy did actually, 
And she's now gone to Harvey Bay to live. And Nancy said, where are you fellowshipping? I haven't seen you. She said, I'm looking for a church. She said, I can't find anything like home. Can't find anything like here. Can't find it where people just want God. Thank you, Father. There's some people here this morning, and you, you know what I'm talking about this morning, the struggle. You know the struggle of just maintaining your faith when the enemy comes in like a flood? God said, I'll raise up a standard against him. The enemy comes in to be down. The enemy comes, there's an answer for him. And all I know about this is one shall put to flight 1,000, two shall put to flight 10,000. And there's something about the prayer of agreement. There's something about breaking strongholds, breaking the bondages. And I'm just going to ask us all to stand to our feet right now. And if God's been speaking to you this morning and, and you say, I, 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 just, I just need to break some things. I need to stand up and... And perhaps fight some things. I need to, I need to, yeah, I just need anyhow. I'm just going to open up this altar to you right now. And I'm going to ask you to just come to the front. And just, just believe for God to touch you. Just believe for the Spirit of God to touch you. Maybe somebody here this morning, and you've never given your life to Christ and you need to. But if you're here this morning and you want some prayer, just come. Just come. Just come. It's going to wait a few moments if you're all on your way to glory and all smashing the devil and the devil's got no, no place in you and you're all victorious. Well, I'm out here and you can come and pray for me. But if you just need some prayer, just come quickly. Just come. Thank you, Jesus. There'll be others this morning just need to come. Not meaning that you're a bad Christian or you're this or that. Just that you're saying, recognize I just need help. I need a bit of help. I need a bit of help. I need some help. The enemy comes to, to, to rob from me. The enemy comes to, to attack me. He comes to hurt me. He comes to knock me about. I've had enough of it. I've had enough of that. I've had enough. Just say in your heart, enough is enough. Enough is enough. You can come. You can just quickly come if that's you this morning. We're just going to pray for people. We're just going to pray. It's going to believe. It's going to believe. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Releasing people. Jesus, Jesus, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory. Father, I pray today that you would help us to have the knowledge, the understanding of really what you've done for us, what salvation really means, what you brought us out of, what you brought us into, the way you want us to live, the way you want us to have victory over the enemy, over the flesh, over, over all the areas, my God. I pray that we would learn to fight, we'd learn to fight, stand up, we'd learn to use your word as, like a sharp-edged sword, uh, dividing, separating, smashing the enemy. And for that, we'll give you all the praise, we'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen and Amen. Thank you, Tom. Amen.